Hi, my name is Ken Lasterson. I wrote the microbiome prescription website. As some of you know, I am not a medical professional or even a um, biochemist. I am by academic training and profession, a statistician and software developer. When I have, over the last few years, I've been looking at a large number of studies and most of the time I look at the studies and go, excuse me, these researchers are forcing beliefs which they were taught to believe in on the data and actually ignoring the data they don't have the statistical expertise or attitude to look at the data and realize wait a minute something is wrong so let's go and do a quick recap because the new feature which i'm showing today is connected to the same type of problem um here is a bell curve um, it's a standard normal distribution and almost everybody seems to assume that the microbiome will behave in that manner. Sorry folks, it doesn't and your data shouts it out but you basically ignore it because you know you've been taught how to use the bell curve and normal distribution and you're comfortable with it. Now, when we go and we go and look at the actual data, we see a curve looking like this. That doesn't look like that at all. It's totally different. And the result is, okay, what's going on? It's a different type of curve, a different type of statistical distribution, which means that all the handling or what it does changes. Now, if we look at that, and we also have something called a box plot which basically works from the average and it is a way to try to handle moderately abnormal data which isn't quite a bell curve but sort of bell curve and we have the same thing but when we go down and actually look at some other data which are actually out there in the real world let's look at income hey it doesn't that curve look a lot like the microbiome curve up above it does and that's not a bell curve we do not have the characteristic of a bell curve which is that the average income is what 50 percent of the people in the population are earning which is requirement for a bell curve uh anybody who lives anywhere knows that that's not correct that the um, average income and the income level that 50 percent of people have do not a match now, if we go down and take a look at how this type of economic data is processed, you see there's something called a logarithmic scale, which is used. And what it does is changes this ugliness into something which is much nicer. Um, and you can see that average is one and the medium is another average. So with this type of thing, we can actually have a better perform curve and you can then even look at the curve and say okay wait a minute somebody who is up here is different than somebody who's down there but between those values is probably typical wage range for people in the US and we do the same type of thing with the microbiome and we use a method from finance called the count of multiple distribution and we use that to determine if you have a abnormal range or not now let's flip back and look at something else one thing which i added a while back is to get a feel for what the data is looked like is is the percentile percentage distribution which is two words that almost sounds the same and basically when we convert things to percentile we convert things to a uniform distribution and it's always would be a uniform distribution would be well behaved and what do we expect if you take a sample and create 10 bins of things picked at random from the sample and everything is uniform distribution you would expect the percentage in each one of these or the count in each one of these to almost be the same statistically or reasonably close and what we have and what i've realized is that we don't we, we often have a overpopulation of the low percentile and underpopulation of the higher one and with that it basically implies that 
the bacteria that are causing all these loads are some of the high ones which are way out of whack and I went and have an algorithm to determine the most likely one in this case this particular genus is is probably the one way out of whack and it actually has three components of it which is actually out of whack now for my reviews often I've taken that data and manually compared to another one etc so the new feature which I've added is actually to make your life very easy because it does that and also it makes use of something else oops sorry uh, which is over here uh, and I went into the wrong spot and Ah, uh, okay. Um, let's hop over and show the result, and let's not worry about where. Um, it, oh, I actually, I think I know what may have happened. Um, it is multiple samples, and over here, what I also use is the bacteria under ten percent and over ten percent. These two numbers here should in a well-balanced microbiome, a healthy microbiome, should be almost the same number. As you see, they're not the same number. They are three times the difference. So we have all of these bits of information, but if you have multiple samples, you're busy cutting and pasting like I've been doing into Excel. Now, if you go over to multiple samples, here, you have multiple sample comparison, which was there before, and you have a whole bunch of different things here, and you can go and take a look at all the numbers. All of those tend to be tend to result in information overload. However, the percentage report, which is what I just showed you, is now here, which makes it much easier. And just click there, review report, and then you can see the count at the top and the count at the bottom, you can see what the ratio is. And basically the ratio here has improved. It's closer to the ideal number, which is one, where both numbers are the same. But again, what we have, we have a overabundance of low percentile bacteria and under, under balance of high bacteria. And then below I listed everything which is shared between all of the samples by the date so if I could type something like this one we see that two of the samples is there and you can see what things are in common between them some things are only on one report some things are consistent like for example this one is on was on two reports another one which is there so it allows you for multiple samples to say okay which ones are cast together but we do have uh, the bacterioids being of concern. And now we go down and then we see the count, which is basically very straightforward. Um, its purpose is to summarize there. If you have 15 of them, then this will be, work out. And then down below, we have the percentiles for there. Again, you can sort it, the, sort it or should be able to sort it. I think I missed that one. Um, by um pers by uh yeah i'll get that fixed but for example um the generous percentage here is 33 percent it should only be 10 percent 20 percent 36 percent so it improved and then it went the other way in this case just one happened after a person got long covid so things went wacky again here was before his first set of labs second set of labs following suggestions we see he is moving towards the normal and then down the other end we see um the shift and throughout each level so they can go on exploring the same thing with the genus and we have just whopping big jump after getting long COVID. okay so that is 
basically it, you, you have, of course, the other things you can, can do. For example, um, bacterial taxonomy, which will give you this massive dozens and dozens of page reports. Uh, 845, so you can see what the difference is from each one there and um, see what the risks are. In this case, we identify ones which have the risk there. Um, and it's just more information. Again, I apologize for giving you more and more information. Generally, what I have found is that I don't want to deprecate methods because people come in with different beliefs and they can be pretty passionate. So I will keep adding new information and I will avoid taking away old way of taking, uh, old ways of viewing things. For example, um, I have end products, which is here. And we have to count there. And for example, this person seems to have high risk for ammonia. Another things there, and those things are consistent across uh, all three samples, which again is more information. It indicates consistent that a layer of the microbiome is consistently interesting. Okay, that's basically. I just wanted to show you the new feature under multiple samples, which sits under multiple samples comparison. You have all the other things. Again, it's basically targeted for people who have multiple samples and allows you to take a look at what changed from one sample to the other with, as I said, a massive overloaded information. Okay.